Energy doesn't flow, and nothing is made of energy. In fact, energy isn't even a thing. It's just a number, a concept, a property made up by humans. Confused? Sound like complete nonsense? Stick around, I promise, this is real physics. Up until the mid-1800s, it was believed by some scientists that heat was some sort of physical substance, a fluid, that was transferable between objects. Half a century later, with Einstein's famous E equals mc squared, energy became connected with mass, itself a concept that, at least in the eyes of the public, is what stuff is. Consequently, this idea of energy being a substance that can flow and make up matter has survived in the public imagination, despite how wrong it is. It wasn't until 1918, when mathematician Emmy Noether published her eponymously named theorems, that we really understood what energy is. But now we do, and it's not a substance. Let me explain. So matter, which we might just colloquially call stuff, is things like molecules and atoms and electrons. Things made of particles, basically. And those things have properties. They might have color, or length, speed, location, whatever. And one of the simplest goals of physics is to figure out how those properties change over time. Now, of course, some properties can easily change. A bowling ball changes its position when you throw it, and other properties, like the color of gold, don't change easily, unless you do something dramatic to it. And one of the things that's useful to know when doing physics is which properties change and which stay the same. So here's an example. You might have heard of conservation of mass, that the number of kilograms of a sample doesn't change when it undergoes a chemical reaction. That's the kind of thing that's useful to know, because it lets you learn about what the system is doing. For example, if you burn a piece of paper and weigh the ashes, the ashes will weigh less than the paper did. But if you know that the total mass actually didn't change at all, then you know that some perhaps invisible substance with mass equal to what's missing from the ashes must have been produced during the chemical reaction. And so we can use this to infer that gases have mass. So the question that another answered is exactly what properties can stay the same and when. It turns out that these conserved quantities are the result of invariance. When the equations governing an object's behavior don't depend on some property, there is an associated quantity that can be calculated for that object that doesn't change. And that's what energy is. If the equations don't depend on what time it is, then there's another combination of properties, the particular formula of which depends on the system, that doesn't change regardless of whether you calculate it today or in 10 years. Importantly, this is not a measurement. It's just a mathematical combination of other measurements. And we call the number that you get when you calculate this quantity the energy of the system. In the simplest case, where the energy's equations don't depend on location either, this energy quantity is calculated by squaring the speed, multiplying by the mass, and dividing by 2. But for any governing equation that doesn't depend on time, Noether's theorem gives you a formula for the energy of the system in a way that depends on measurable quantities. So energy isn't a substance, it's a number calculable from measurements of other properties of a system, and if the rules governing that system don't change over time, then that number won't change either. Like all numbers, it's a concept, and this concept makes predicting the future and understanding our reality easier. But don't confuse it for matter. Matter is stuff which can move and flow. Energy is but a number.